My name is James Keeley. I'm a PhD student at Columbia University in the city of New York, and I research the evolution of social behavior using marine shrimp that live around the Bocas del Toro research station. These shrimp are fascinating because, like ants, bees, wasps, and termites, they live in large colonies with hundreds of workers and often only a single queen. While this is known from terrestrial systems, these shrimp are the only marine animals known to do this. They live inside of sponges, like the sponges you can see in this video. Different species of shrimp often overlap in host sponges, and yet they also often occupy different sponges. The shrimp have adapted to lifestyle inside of the sponge. They're relatively streamlined, fairly plain, not too much to look at, and they have this one very large snapping claw. They're asymmetrical in that only one of their front claws is so large. They can use that claw both to communicate by making a snapping sound that you hear in the water, and to attack other shrimp by shooting a powerful pressurized jet of water out of the front of the claw. That jet is so strong it can blow other shrimp to pieces. Presumably it's also used to defend the sponge against predators. One of my main interests in these shrimp is finding socially important genes. That is, the genes that determine what caste an animal is. We have reason to think that any shrimp is capable of developing into either a queen or a worker, but that their particular developmental path, that is, whether they become a queen or a worker, is determined by the interaction of the environment and their genes. And the way I'm going to get at this is by analyzing what genes are expressed differently in queens and workers. Expressed just means that a gene is actually being used in the animal. It's not just present in the genome, but it's being turned into RNA and then into protein and actually having some kind of a phenotypic consequence. We do this by sampling entire colonies of animals off the seafloor, so we pick up the host sponge that contains them, we race back to the boat as quickly as we can, and tear that sponge apart so that I can get one worker and one queen out of that sponge and put them into a buffer, a solution that kills them and stops any changes that may happen in their RNA. <clears throat> because this has to happen quickly, it's quite a challenge in the field where there's often rocking waves and the small boat environment makes teamwork and detailed work quite difficult. We had a good team and we got a lot done this year. You can see in this video we're picking individual shrimp out of the sponge as we're tearing it apart and placing them in cups. These are the workers. As soon as we find a queen, we'll take some of those workers as well as the queen, we'll put them on buffer and we'll save them. Later in the lab, I cut out the brains of these animals, extract the RNA from them, and then send that RNA away for sequencing. What I get back is a very large, often 6 to 30 gigabyte file that I then have to search through to find differently expressed genes. I didn't expect to be doing so much programming as a biologist, but I do enjoy it. 